Hello, everyone, and welcome to the IB Global Conference Singapore 2022. Thank you for joining our session today titled Every Child Deserves a Coach. My name is Elaine Wong. I am the Primary Years Program Coordinator and also the Head of Continuous Professional Education in Fairview International School, Kuala Lumpur. I am delighted to be your content moderator for the next 45 minutes. Before introducing the speaker, I would like to go over a few key points. We will have a question and answer period at the end of this session. You may send in your questions anytime during the presentation using the Q&A function. As inquirers, we hope you make this session interactive. Do use the chat box to engage and discuss. A recording of this presentation will be available on demand after the session. And now I would like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Vincent Chen, who is a medical graduate from Manchester University. He is also a former psychiatry registrar. With over 12 years of experience in education, he currently leads Fairview International School Malaysia as a principal. Under his leadership, the IB Diploma at Fairview has handed out over 2 million ringgit worth of scholarships and achieved a cohort average of 38 out of 20, 45 points. Fairview has won several awards recently, including the International School Award for Teaching and Learning 2021 for Toolbox, the Skill Development Program, the top 50 IB World Schools in Malaysia, and the top IBDP school in Malaysia in both 2020 and 2021. He led several initiatives in the school, including the ATL Toolbox Program, which was presented at the 2012 IB Asia Pacific Conference, the Seven Seas Project by Tripod Education, and the Prosper Positively School Project by Tony Noble. Over to you, Dr. Vincent. Thanks, Elaine. Very happy to be here. I'd also like to introduce my uh, moderator. Uh, Elaine Wong is the PYP coordinator and head of CPE at Fairview. Uh, she's got five years of experience in teaching and another two years in pedagogical leadership. She graduated with a double degree in uh, communication and marketing. And she believes that every child is born with an amazing amount of potential waiting to be unleashed by the unique teaching methods of the international baccalaureate programs at Fairview. From studying the IB diploma herself to volunteering with Teach for Malaysia, as well as teaching in the IB programs, she realized how effective the IB learner profile attributes are in developing good character amongst children. So just a little bit of introduction about who I am first, okay? So I was a psychiatry registrar. For those of you who don't know the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist, a psychologist is the nice one that sits you down on a couch and talks to you. The psychiatrist is the one that gives you injections and electroconvulsive therapy. I am the psychiatrist. About 12 years ago, I left psychiatry to enter education and I've worked my way through uh, to eventually become the principal at Fairview International School, from a um, uh, MYP teacher to a DP teacher, a DP bio and TOK to a DP coordinator. Uh, sorry, Elaine Wong, you have your hand up? All right, Dr. Vincent, I think we, your slide is frozen. Could you go to the next slide, please? Um, this one? Can you see it? Yes. Yes, okay. but it's not moving. Uh, can you see the broken vase now? No. Okay, that's so sorry just, for that. That's okay, that happens. Share screen. Okay, can you see the slide now? Yes, thank you. Uh, just let me know if it, it does something silly. Okay, so uh, I will, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I will take over your screen share. So sorry okay. about this, ladies. You're going to take over the screen share now. Okay. Sorry about this, guys. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. There we go. Okay. So, a couple of people ask about um, why did I leave medicine to go into education? And the quick answer is I saw a lot of people who were depressed in my clinic in psychiatry. And after a while, I realized that no amount of psychiatry super glue could really help them out here. So I decided instead of waiting for the vows to get broken and then spend time fixing it up together, I begin dedicating my life to making sure that the vase doesn't break, maybe changing the material the clay is made out of. So it bounces when the cup is knocked off the table uh, instead of crashes on the floor and breaks into a million pieces. All right, next slide. Okay, a couple of years ago, we started observing problems. Um, and this is where the whole journey began. Uh, 
Um, we, we noticed three key trends that were affecting our teenagers, say about three years ago. First of all, there, was a, there were a lot of our students with busy working parents, and they generally had less time to coach and spend time with their kids. Now, the, the reason I say that is one of the, um, the things that we believe a parent really should be for their children is their biggest coach, the one who lifts them up and supports them. But this relationship seemed to be degrading in society, especially in the kids that we observed in the school. Second, our teenagers were really affected by tons of uh, distractions. There was so much, so much stimulation thrown their direction, they didn't really know where to look anymore. And finally, expressing emotions was a function of social media. Um, and we all know how social media only portrays one kind of emotion while everything is peachy. And unfortunately, that resulted in quite a distorted sense of self-image. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and I really like to uh, you know, bring this, you don't have to read this full thing, but essentially what it says is when we started approaching this problem, we realized that our, um, we could not lean on our knowledge of our teenage years and our expertise on how we got through our teenage years to help the teens today. Because the world today that they live in is so different from where we were at, we really needed to reimagine that situation uh, and really rethink the way that we approach the, the problem. So how did they manifest? We saw three main things. Uh, uh, next slide, please. We saw three main areas. One, the kids really didn't have strong relationships with each other, with uh, adult figures. And there was a real lack of role modeling of guidance. They didn't have people to look up to, uh, people to guide them. The second thing that we noticed was there was a prevalence of an unfocused instant gratification culture sort of manifested in statements like if it's too difficult uh, never mind i'll just do something else um, if i can't google search it it's too difficult to research let's just try something else um, they weren't able to persevere as much anymore because they were so reliant on that instant gratification sort of culture and third and this is well documented there was an increasing incidence of depression amongst teens as well Next slide. So what was our approach to the problem? We created this program called IS. Now, um, IS stands for Engaging Young Achievers, but it's also what you call a baby falcon. And our school mascot is a falcon, so there we go, okay? Um, before I jump into what exactly IS is, I'll tell you about our school. So we started out in 1978, a bit over 40 years ago, and we wanted to provide affordable, high quality education. That's what the founders set in stone when we began. We have five campuses, about 180 teaching staff, about 1,500 students from 55 nationalities, and we're the first and only network of IB continuum schools in Malaysia. Next slide, please. Uh, some really notable things that we've done very recently. Um, we are the top IB school in Malaysia for the years 2020 and 2021 by average diploma score. And uh, Miss Elaine did share a little bit about this, but we also have this amazing ATL program called the Toolbox that we presented at the, uh, that I presented at the 2012 IBAP conference. And this program won the Teaching and Learning Award uh, recently as well in 2021. We have a next slide, please. We've got five campuses across Malaysia and one campus in Scotland uh, as well. Uh, we can jump slides. There we go. Okay. So enough about you know the basics and the introduction what were our goals what did we set out to try and do when we began on the process of trying to solve these problems um next slide please first of all we lent on two core values leadership and agency slash ownership leadership really came from the form of um, personal leadership we wanted our children to make a difference in the world but in order to do that they needed to develop a sense of personal leadership first and agency and ownership really came from, it was influenced by the pyp uh, developments that really brought agency uh, to the center of our focus the other things we really knew that we wanted to do was we wanted to use coaching as a process and i'm going to explain a bit more about that we wanted to make sure that everybody was impacted from year four to year 12. We didn't wanna leave anybody out. We wanted to develop an action-oriented and a goal-focused mindset. And I'm gonna explain what that exactly means because we also noticed that that was one of the key hallmarks of a lot of successful people. Um, as a school, we wanna improve academic performance and we wanted something called a high net promoter score. Um, and Elaine's gonna share a little bit later on about what that, that high net promoter score, what does it mean? What is that thing? 
Uh, so you can see that when we when we started out, we really had sort of very sharply defined key objectives that we wanted to accomplish before we began, and we built towards that about two and a half years ago. Next slide, please. So first of all, coaching. Why did we choose this thing? If you haven't watched this TED Talk before by Atul Gawande, I suggest you watch it. And in essence, what it really tells you is of all the people that have done amazing things in the world, who have been incredibly successful, they all have a coach. Um, coaching is well known to be one of the highest, most successful uh, forms of training uh, in the business world today. And it's incredibly powerful. Uh, there's a lot of research about it, about the coaching process and why it's so powerful. And you know, there, there, there was so much supporting it. We knew we had to use this as a process. Uh, next slide, please. So I like how this uh, Tom Landry really defines what co a coach is. It's a coach is someone who tells you what you don't want to hear, who has you see what you don't want to see, so you can always be who you knew you could be. Next slide, please. But the unfortunate problem is that coaching is expensive. You know, coaches run anywhere between. 500, uh, well, I'm just going to forget the range. The, uh, the article tells us in 2017 that they cost about 500 US dollars per session. Now that's one session is one hour. In Malaysian ringgit, that's about 2000 ringgit. And I know people whose monthly salary is 2000 ringgit. I, in fact, the minimum wage level is 2000 ringgit per month. So that means basically that, well, most people can't afford coaching. So where you see these powerful, uh, effective executive coaches impact. You see them at the CEO level or maybe the director level, but most people never see a coach. And so they don't benefit from such an amazing process. But is there a way to bring this amazing process to children all the way down to every child? And we're gonna show you exactly how. Um, next slide, please. The other thing we really wanted to get in is something called an action-oriented mindset. And I'm gonna explain this. Now, uh, a sniper, uh, would do something like this, aim, 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 and then take one shot. And assuming that he's aimed really well and takes a shot, then he gets his kill. A rifleman, on the other hand, would do something a little bit different. He'd aim, shoot, aim, shoot, aim, shoot, aim, shoot. And that would be what the process, uh, that would be a process we would call pivoting. Now we know in, in an uncertain situation, you need to pivot. You need to be a rifleman, not a sniper, because the, if the, the situation was incredibly certain and it was well understood, go ahead and be a sniper. But most of life is not that certain. And so we wanted our kids to really take action, shoot first, and then pivot, shoot, and then pivot. And don't spend so much time planning and planning into paralysis. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm gonna to explain to you really quickly what did we do? And this is the real meat of what do we do, the mechanics. Next slide. We started out, of course, with an essential agreement, how we're going to behave in the room together. One, own your own experience, kids. So the first rule for all of our kids in the program was, guys, you own your own experience. Don't tell other people how to do things. Um, don't blame other people for you not learning. It's your issue. Own your own experience. That's the phrase that we use. Second one, confidentiality creates a safe space for all of us. And so we, we encourage all of our kids very, very strongly. Um, and it's so strong that if you violate this, you could be kicked out of the group. They have to maintain the confidentiality of the group because if people don't share, share deeply and vulnerably and um, they can't do that without a safe space, then the program will never achieve its objective. We will never be able to help our kids grow uh, and be courageous uh, to get down to that vulnerable moments. Third one, communicate non-judgmentally. Uh, and this is an incredibly important principle for us. You don't know what somebody else is going through, even though you think you've gone through the same thing, chances are your context was incredibly different. So don't ever judge. And we teach our children all of these three things. Uh, very, very explicitly. Next slide, please. Now, the coaching process. We identified one specific type of coaching we were going to implement because we couldn't do all, all of the, the forms of coaching. There's actually quite a few. One of them specifically was called performance coaching. And it's very, very simple to implement. One, what is the core problem that you want to solve? Define the core issue. Two, set a smart goal. Three, build an action plan. And four, 
nurture a strengths-based and positive mindset. I mean, I refer to the work by uh, Dr. Leah Waters, who spoke earlier on today um, about the positive mindset and sorry, the strengths-based mindset. And we were on this two and a half years ago already. Uh, next slide, please. So the, well, how does the program mechanics work? We basically run nine sessions every six months. So it kind of runs into once a fortnight roughly. Each session's about 80 minutes and we put five to seven kids in a group. That's all it is. Next slide, please. All of the kids choose three goals at the beginning of their nine sessions. One academic, one personal, and one anything you choose. Okay, so there's lots of choice going on there. Then after that, in each session, we have two, uh, we break it up into two parts, first 40 minutes and second 40 minutes. In the first 40 minutes, they share their top 5% victories and bottom 5% challenges. And I'm going to explain exactly how that works. So let's just say my goal is to lose, uh, sorry, to lose weight. Okay. My top 5% victories could perhaps be, um, and this is a very specific way they're taught to, to share. Emotion. I feel elated. Headline. I have managed to exercise three out of four times this week. My goal was four, but I managed to get up to three times this week. Significance. Um, this is the most I have ever exercised. I'm so happy with myself for breaking through my own personal barriers. Then maybe then after that, they'll share their bottom 5% challenges. Maybe they'll say disappoint, emotion disappointment. Headline, I snacked three times last week. Significance. This is the part of me I don't like, where I don't manage to control how much I eat. It, it shows how indisciplined I am, and I don't like that person. So when they share about their top 5% victories and their bottom 5% challenges, they're really going into vulnerable moments here, particularly when they start talking about the significance of how that is really important to them. And then they, the others respond in a non-judgmental way with templated statements. So they're quite limited in the way they're going to respond with things like, I totally connect with how you shared that you were really disappointed when you snacked the other week. I'm, I'm very curious to find out what made you exercise three times this week. So these are all sharings or responses that uh, happen in a non-judgmental way. And over time, as you see these things, uh, as the kids practice this, they, they learn that, you know, just because somebody shares something doesn't mean I have to judge it straight away. And the people that are sharing think, well, I can share what I need to share. Nobody's judging me. And I, I'm more confident to go deeper. In the final 40 minutes of this session, what they do is they learn skills that go back to what they're trying to achieve here. Now, I'm going to show you a list of exactly what skills we're going to be teaching in a bit. So it's going to get a bit more clear. But these are explicit sessions, by the way. OK, uh, next slide, please. Each session is facilitated by a licensed counselor. And I'm gonna explain later on about how dangerous it is not to use a licensed counselor because a lot of things turn up in these things. Another one, each participant also gets a report card to find out how much they have uh, progressed because what gets measured, uh, sorry, what gets assessed gets learned. And finally, every participant, as they do the activities, they upload their data, their information, their answers into their personal blog to start documenting their journey. Now, once you start seeing the list of items that the kids actually learn about, things like strengths, then you can start putting things together that this is their own personal portfolio that's being developed over here. And when they start thinking about you know, their future or who am I, then they're going to really have a lot to work with. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is an example of how they construct their goals. Uh, we start at the top left with the core issue. Why is the goal important to me? And then they set an outcome goal at the top. I'm gonna lose 10 kilograms in 12 months. And then they put down a process goal. What are the three most impactful things that you can do that's gonna help you towards your goal? Then they list down their potential challenges and some actions to take to overcome or anticipate those challenges in advance. And of course, they put a little deadline at the end of that as well. Next slide, please. At every time they do their first 40 minute update, what they also do is they're gonna share this monitoring sheet, which is essentially all of their goals put into some numbers. So they're gonna say, oh, you know, I was supposed to lose two kilograms this week, I'm at three, yeah. Or I'm supposed to lose two kilograms this week, but I'm at one, I'm not feeling good about this. And the reason why we really focus so hard on making sure the kids stare at these numbers nonstop is what gets measured gets done. And I guarantee you that if you're trying to lose weight, and you check your weight once a month, you're not gonna lose weight because you gotta keep your eye on the ball. 
Okay. Uh, so I think this answers the question by Ku. Thank you for that question. The, how do they keep track of their journey? Are they reflecting daily or weekly? So these are actually uh, fortnightly sessions, Ku. Um, so read the how the coaches selection selected. They're all counselors. Uh, they are all licensed Malaysian counselors. Okay. Right. Um, I'm going to go forward first before I move. Uh, I answer any more questions. Assessment. So whatever gets assessed gets learned and these are some of our assessments of course we create a rubric because we are in ib school and this is the level four example of communication skills and ownership so the kids basically get these assessments and they, they self-assess at the beginning and at the end and then our facilitator gives them an observed assessment uh, at the end of it so that they can kind of benchmark themselves and say oh my gosh i was actually a lot better or my facilitator thinks i'm a lot better at ownership than i thought i was or vice versa. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the program structure and content. And as you, and as you can see, it's quite detailed. Um, there are nine sessions here, and that starts out with an introduction, of course, and of that self-assessment. Then we go into smarter goals. Now, remember that action-oriented mindset I told you about? We want our kids to go. Don't stand paralyzed. And if you think about it carefully, they set their goals before they learn about smarter goals. We want them to set a goal realize that they can set a better goal, accept that they could modify and pivot, and then do the pivoting with them on the spot. So we practice falling down and falling quickly and getting back up again. Then we, in session three, we talk about our top 5% victories and challenges. We train them about how to actually go deep into it. What is a 5%? We don't want the 90% the, the in between. We want your greatest highs and your greatest lows. And that's where people really get vulnerable because they discover so much about themselves. Number four, we, session four, we teach about non-judgmental communication and why it's so important and how to do it. Uh, session five, and I really love uh, Dr. Leah's um, session this morning because we've been doing VR profiling for two and a half years already. So we teach them about their strength and particularly we show them how do you use your strengths to overcome your weaknesses? A lot of people focus on their weaknesses and try and fix it. But if you learn about strengths-based learning or strengths-based thinking, then you really should use your strengths to overcome your weaknesses and work on building your strengths to become even stronger. Item six, you can see gap analysis. We teach them that as well. Building trust. There's a very special trust equation that we teach them about how to build trust with other people. And then, of course, gratitude. So important, that gratitude to build that positivity. And session nine is about bringing everything together. And we call that leading yourself. We try and consolidate everything. Like any good class, you got to consolidate. Now, if you go between level one and level two, you're going to see, let's say, like session two, right? There's smarter goal in level one. And in level two, session two, we says we have purpose-driven goal setting where we add ikigai into the concepts here. So you can see that it tears upwards. There's a vertical, align, uh, vertical alignment going between level one, two. And if you look at the bottom, we have level three and level four as well. But I'm not showing that today because it's just too much. Um, so you can see we actually really thought this through really deeply. And many of our kids have gone from level one to level two to three to four. And in order to get from one to two, You've got to pass the assessment and get a certain number of points. All right. So next slide, please. It, uh, I've shared with you what were we trying to accomplish, the theory behind it. I've shared with you what we've done and what are the results. Over to you, Elaine. Thank you, Dr. Vincent. So we know that, you know, what measures gets done. So how do you measure success in any service that we provide? Typically, we put out surveys and ask if they like it, but this is not a good measure because even though they have said they like your service, they are not willing to recommend it to others. In the business world, it is widely recognized that the Net Promoter Score, also in short form NPS, is the best measure of success. We do a lot of surveys in school, but for us, what really counts is if we are willing to share it with their friends, we know that we have done a good job. So the NPS is really the only way we can tell we are succeeding objectively. So what is the NPS? Net Promoter Score is measuring the number of um, the promoters, subtracting the detractors. The promoters are people who give the score from 9 to 10, and then the detractors are people who give the scores between 0 to 6. So we have this passive people between 7 to 8, which is not included in the equation. So the question that we're really asking here in the Net Promoter Score is, how likely are you uh, to recommend us to a friend? You know. So then, how did AS coaching program do in the NPS? 
right? We have done this survey many, many rounds and we really did not do very well in the beginning, which is why we continuously to take feedback to improve from the initial launch. Since then, there has been a significant growth of rate of more than 50%. Our current cohort of students have actually given us the NPS score of 68%. It really, really shows that we started from really humble beginnings with this project. So in measuring success, it's not just about how likely one person will recommend the program. Earlier, Dr. Vincent talked about goal setting with the students. You know, so then how many of them have actually successfully accomplished their goals? I know many of us set resolutions beginning of the year. I want to lose five kilos this year, or I want to exercise every day. But realistically, how many of us actually achieve that? 99% um, actually do not achieve anything, even though we have set our mind to it. See, through the AS coaching program, 78% of our students have accomplished two out of three goals they set out in 2021. Now, that is truly impressive. And these are only 10-year-old kids. So can you imagine what would happen if they intentionally set goals every year for the rest, uh, for the next five years? How goal-oriented would they have become? They will have developed a strong, focused, goal-oriented mindset, a trait that even many adults do not possess. So we remember, we must remember why we were doing this in the first place. You know, kids are in school to learn, and academic achievement is really important in what we do. See, through this coaching program, we can prove that academic change is shown as evident in, in this chart. It just in one academic year, there was an 8.8% growth. So can you imagine if we're able to improve 8 to 10% every year in less than five years, even the average child would be able to become a distinction student. So let's take one of my students, for example, right? Uh, if uh, any of you that just joined late, I'm, one, I'm the Premier's program coordinator too. All right, so um, one of my students, his name is Farid. Let's call him Farid. The name has been changed. So he's a nine-year-old child who has been diagnosed with learning disability. Um, he has his diagnosed saying that his intellectual ability is of a three-year-old. And he was thoroughly challenged when he went into year four because alongside his diagnosis, he was also a non-native speaker. Hence, he was unable to cope up with his peers. See, then the pandemic happened. It made the situation even worse when all of us had to shift from physical to online learning. So the coaches actually started the weekly AS coaching with him in the previous academic year. Over time, homeroom teachers started to see improvement in him in terms of his behavior and also in his social and communication skills with his peers. He set his goal to improve in his academics and with the proper guidance, he was able to achieve his goal. Today, he's definitely thriving and able to participate effectively in group work and have more friends. Now, that is from the teacher's perspective. Let us hear from my, our students' perspective. I, I, did you put in a share sound as well? Gabby, and I'm from grade 16. Good afternoon, my name is Nika Gabriel P. Suleiman and I am from M2G. Greetings, this is Anika from Orba for M4R. Hi, my name is Arsha Sanyal and I am from M2G. Hi, my name is Carol. Today I'll be talking about my opinion on the coaching program. And in all honesty, I think this coaching program is actually very helpful. This is because in all my years of coaching, I've learned how to match my time usually in academic and my personal life. And I've also learned to be empathetic. I've also learned how to gratitude and many other things which can actually be very helpful further on in life. Overall, the program is very helpful since it allows all of us to find what we are and find out our strengths and weaknesses. Personally, I enjoy the coaching program more than I thought I would. But with coaching program, it helped me enhance my skills in understanding myself and also my peers. I have learned how to guide my peers through the problem. For example, I guide them by letting them identify strategies to improve their problem. And of course, if I see them encountering any issue, I do my best in trying to help them. The second thing I've learned is setting my educational goal. For example, some of my goals in grade 5 were that I would get a 7 or 8 math. I tried to study and focus, and I ended up getting it. I have learned how to manage my time and how to coach my peers. For the past few years, it has been a bit difficult for me to manage my time accordingly because the amount of tasks to complete has grown over time. However, my time management skill has improved now because of my coaches. 
They have taught me and suggested me ways to improve my time management skills. I think the program will be very helpful to my peers in various ways. It can help them be more open-minded and caring towards others, understanding more about ways they can improve their personal and academic development. As mentioned previously, the program can teach or enhance many skills and IB learner profiles, such as teamwork and being open-minded. It also gives us a chance to voice out some of our suggestions and ways to uh, address challenges for others. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a good day. So that is it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I love hearing from my kids, especially my kids who have, you know, progressed on to the middle years. Right. So, of course, not forgetting our... Um, our important stakeholder, you know, our parents from the learning community. So I changed all the names, you know, for privacy reasons. So um, these are actually students who progress from the primary years to the middle years. Um, M1 is what we, what we call the year seven here. So um, Ginny's mother actually says that, you know, that her child loves the coaching program and she really hopes that she can learn more. Um, Esther's father says that, you know, he can see significant changes in the child since joining the program and he, he, hopes that she will actually proceed to level two. And Sam's father, actually, um, this child has, was in our sister campus, you know, in a smaller campus. So um, the child actually recently transferred to our bigger campus and they were, he was really worried about her adaptability. But, you know, he, he noticed that she has progressed so far, definitely in her self-management skills after joining the coaching program. So that is all from my side, you know, sharing, I love sharing the results from our community, the testimonials. Um, back to you, Dr. Vincent. Thanks, Elaine. Okay, so we, as Elaine shared, we made a lot of mistakes at the beginning. We've been experimenting for two and a half years, or three years actually by now. Um, and these are some of the, the things that we really learned uh, along the way. First of all, when you give kids the space to breathe into their hopes and dreams, you can see really amazing things happen. That safe space created is created by a, sen a sense of confidentiality, non-judgmental com communication, um, and that uh, um, that drive over time when they they know they can share about their failures and their their greatest joys. Next, the best gift that you can we can give to any child is to believe that they can and will succeed. And I've really drawn this from one of the a distinguished. Um, educator called Harry Wong, who talked about this concept called positive expectations, which is essentially looking to a kid's eyes and saying, I believe you can and will succeed this no matter what has happened in the past. And finally, always have a counselor ready. Now, if you want your teachers to do this, I think it's possible, but always have a counselor ready because you never know what things unearth uh, when they start doing those updates and you need to be ready to manage those properly or at least refer somebody on quickly. Okay. Next slide, please. So where are we going from all of this? Um, first of all, we're building a web-based program on a, a software called Katra uh, so that we can actually provide this more scalably to other people, um, not just in our school, but around the world as well. We have a university college a sister organization called Fairview University College, and they are preparing university level training programs, postgraduate diplomas to help teach uh, educators how to coach kids. And finally, we want to put these things together to train educators to help do this and to create resources in order to implement this so that we can provide coaching for those people who really, really need it. And I'll give you a hint. Those people probably aren't in our very fancy international schools right now. So with that, uh, next slide. If you want to share, uh, find out more about uh, what we are doing, where we are at, um, maybe you know, ask us a couple, couple of questions, just get in contact with us. Got my WhatsApp there, my LinkedIn profile, and Elaine's LinkedIn profile up here. Just scan the QR codes and uh, you know contact us anytime. Um, after this, we're also going to have a round table at 2 p.m. straight away after this session. So do join us uh, and chit chat with us. Sometimes. Yeah, you no, know, maybe for a chat or if you've got any questions or maybe just want to say hi, that would be great. And finally, next slide, connect with us. Uh, if you ever want to contact Fairview International School, here are some of our contact details, guys. All right, guys. Ah, thank, thank you, Doc. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Vincent. All right.
Okay, we are now going to take questions from the audience. As a reminder to attendees, you can still submit questions through the Q&A function or the chat box, which can be found on the right side of your screen. So our first question is, um, can any teacher run a coaching program? Must it be a counsellor? Over to you, Dr. Lee. Thanks. Okay, so this question was asked uh, by Reed first. Um, non counselors have run parts of the program before but we found that counselors were the most ideal to do it now i can recognize that in most circumstances most schools you don't have enough counselors to really run this maybe you just have one counselor in a school and there's a big school so you can train your teachers to do this uh, but just make sure that you've got that counselor handy all right thank you dr vincent all right the next question we have is it possible to run the program in the early years age range so what are the limitations that determine how you choose which levels to run the program at? So we did try and run the program at a very young age. Actually, we started at five years old. And between the age of five and nine, what we realized is we couldn't run the full program because the kids didn't have the emotional maturity to tell us what were their top 5% or bottom 5% challenges. And the activities were also too sophisticated. So we actually redesigned another program just for them, which is a, a much more play-based, activity-based program, uh, so they, could, they can just have a bit of fun and get a bit of exposure to the coaching concepts. Right, thank you, Dr. Vincent. All right, last question. Um, what were the main challenges faced when implementing the program? You know, how, did, how did you manage to overcome them? I think that one of the biggest challenges was time. Um, so trying to find time in the school timetable to actually implement these classes without making the kids stay back for another session was incredibly difficult. Um, so timetabling uh, was a real big challenge for us. The other one was trying to make sure that um, the parents were on board with this strange new program as well, because uh, the parents and kids at the beginning, they really wonder what, what is this coaching program? Is it just another uh, hoo-ha, uh, another rah 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 session that you're going to motivate us and then send us home. Um, and that took us quite a few years to really fight through uh, and win over the hearts of our stakeholders. But yeah, those are the two main challenges that we had. Finding the information on how to do the coaching, that was the easy part. Uh, and you know, working, we have a small team of counselors, just two counselors here who are running the whole program. And even the, over the pandemic, they were running it uh, on Zoom. So you know, working with a small team really helped a lot to make sure that um, you know, we implemented the processes quite consistently. Right. Thank you again, Dr. Vincent. I think that's the last q and A. I I think we are good with the time. All right. Thank you again, Dr. Vincent. On behalf of Dr. Vincent and myself, it has been an honor sharing our journey with you. Thank you also to all participants joining us from around the world. Thank you for making this session very engaging. You know, uh, do catch us at the roundtable after, right after this session. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us and don't forget to complete the short session survey before you go. So this was the last live session for today. It has been a full day of learning and interacting with peers. And I look forward to catching up with the on-demand sessions uh, as they become available. We will see you back on the platform tomorrow. Thank you all.